talking about happening here is that we need to be able to identify what's happening with this patient quickly. So we had our little case study there. And in our little case study, we were talking about this patient who ended up driving to work and then having symptoms at work shortly after he arrived at work. So one of our main questions here with this patient is, when did the symptoms start? Did the symptoms start when the patient was at home? Are we gonna say that the symptoms started when the patient went to bed the night before? Or are we gonna say that the symptoms started when the patient arrived at work or when the, the EMS got there? So that's one of the questions we have to answer about our patient who's potentially having a stroke is, when did these symptoms start? So that we have an idea as to when to start our timeline. So here is the National Institute for Neurologic Disorders and Stroke Golden Hour Timeline for how we're going to get this patient treated. So the first thing is, we want to get the patient from the door to the doctor within 10 minutes. Okay, now that may sound like that's a pretty good period of time or a pretty long period of time, but in fact, it often takes quite a bit longer than that to get the physician to see the patient in the emergency department. So we have a patient who's come in by EMS, is seen first by the triage nurse, then by the nurse in the back. We have to get the patient on the monitor, get the patient hooked up to the blood pressure machine, get the vital signs, get labs, get an IV in, all that kind of stuff usually happens before the physician sees the patient. Okay, so now the physician comes in to see the patient. So hopefully we've got all that stuff done in 10 minutes. Physician sees the patient and then needs to call the neurologist and talk to the neurologist about this patient presentation. So now we're talking 15 minutes that all that's happened since the patient hit the door. 25 minutes until the patient's over in the CT scan. Okay, you can see we're moving along really fast here. 45 minutes until we have CT interpretation. Okay, so we're gonna give the radiologist 20 minutes here to whip off that CT scan and read it. 60 minutes, door to treatment time. Okay, so that's what we're talking about as being this golden hour. Now basically we say we've got three hours from symptom onset to, is the window that we can use to give TPA. When we get outside of that three hour window, what happens now is that we have so much ischemia going on that is causing so much disruption in the brain and the vessels start to become friable, which means they become fragile and they're more likely to break and bleed. And then the, inc the risk of the patient bleeding from TPA increases dramatically. So basically we've got a three hour window that we need to deal with. And what this is saying here is we're gonna, cons we're gonna count on this last hour occurring in the emergency department. Okay, so let's try and figure out time-wise how else this looks. This gives us a better idea as to what we need to do in order to be able to meet some of these goals. If the patient is at home and starts to have symptoms and immediately recognizes those symptoms and says, call 911, or a family member happens to be there, immediately recognizes the symptoms and says, hey, call 911, then what will happen is it'll take on average about 14 minutes for EMS to get to that patient's house. So the national average is 14 minutes from the time you call until the time EMS is at your house. Now in some locations in the country it takes longer, other locations it takes less time. But the national average is 14 minutes. So 14 minutes until EMS gets there. Now EMS is at the house, they have to do vital signs, they have to get a history, they have to get the patient loaded up on a cot, they've got to get an IV in. They've got all these things that they have to do. So they get all that stuff done, get the patient loaded up in the truck, and then they drive to the hospital. Okay, on average, that's gonna take 45 minutes. So we put that together and we've already used the first hour. Now, can you see why it's so important that your patient know the signs and symptoms of stroke? We can't have them sitting at home for a couple hours wondering why they can't use their left arm. All right, so they've got to be able to pick up on this right away, or the family member has to be able to, so we can call EMS right away, because the first hour is already chewed up. Okay, so now we get two hours to treat, and the NIN is to, would like us to be able to do it in one hour. So how is this going to happen? Your average emergency room is not going to be able to meet these goals. In your average emergency department, maybe they're also taking care of, at the same time, a trauma patient or two, a patient who's having a heart attack. I mean, there's times in the emergency department that we're worried about who are we going to do CPR on first? You know, not who's going to need to have TPA. 
you know, and if you're breathing, you're way down the scale here, okay? So, you know, what we're going to have to do is to change the way that we triage this patient, change the way that we're responding to this patient. Now, how would we respond to a trauma patient, for example? When a trauma patient comes in, there's a whole team of people that are called down to care for that patient. So there's a nurse, well, the, oftentimes there's nurses that go with that team, and there's physicians that go with that team, and uh, there may be a trauma surgeon that goes with that team, and then there's respiratory and lab, and all sorts of people come in and converge all at once on that patient and do everything that needs to be done. That's the kind of thing we need to have done here. And that's why a lot of your hospitals have gone to developing stroke teams so that we can get this kind of urgent attention to that patient because we have such a narrow window of opportunity to be able to treat the patient with invasive type technology. All right, what if this patient maybe has a clot that we think we could suck out? We saw a little video this morning where the patient had a clot that they were able to remove. Now we have to send the patient down to the angio lab, get the patient prepped, get the patient on the table, get the patient sedated, get the patient ready, and get them into angio. So again, can you see, we're, we're dealing with a very narrow time window. We have to move quickly, effectively, to be able to get the appropriate treatment for this patient. So it's important that we teach our patients the signs and symptoms of stroke so that they will be able to identify them quickly, the family will be able to identify them quickly. We'll be able to get the patient to the hospital rapidly so that then we can get appropriate treatment for the patient. Okay, so that's going to be our goal here in treating the patient who potentially could be having a stroke in this golden hour.